what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be learning how you can cleanly parse out html from websites so it's a probably a pretty uh pretty random topic but surprisingly you can actually achieve really cool apps with this approach so here we've got google images opened up and obviously there's a bunch of images in here and let's say we wanted to build an app to show all of these images in a table view. Now parsing out HTML is kind of a pain, but in this video, you're gonna learn how to do it uh, in a super clean way and it's super performant and you guys are gonna love it. So that said, make sure you destroy that like button, get Xcode ready, get excited, let's jump right in. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so first things first, we're gonna open up Xcode and we're gonna create a new project. We'll stick with a single view application and I'm gonna call this HTML parsing. Go ahead and save it wherever you'd like and let's jump right in. So I just went ahead and copied that Google URL. So I'm gonna paste it in here and I'll actually just make it a uh, string like so and this is what we're going to be loading to parse the html so parsing we can do it manually or we can use a framework so i'm going to go down the path of a framework i will explain at the end how to do it manually for those of you that want to learn how to do it but doing it entirely manually is quite a bit of effort so go ahead and open up terminal and we are going to cd into our project and what did i call it i think html parsing we're going to do a pod init to set up Cocoa Pods. If you don't have Cocoa Pods installed, take a look at how to install that with my earlier video. Open a pod file. And then in here, the Cocoa Pod that we want to bring in is called uh, appropriately HTML kit. Make sure you lowercase that P. Hit command Q to close it. Run a pod install. And that will bring in the library for you. And once you bring it in, it's fairly nimble and small. It should be pretty quick. You can go ahead and open up the project name .xc workspace. Uh, let's open up our project folder here now. Go back to that view controller, pick a simulator from the list, hit the run button to make sure things are still compiling. Let me expand this Xcode window to give ourselves a little more room to work. And we're gonna ignore all of these warnings. Uh, we can just hit this little button right here to filter out warnings that are non-errors. And we saw the app just compiled and launched. So how do we actually parse out content from HTML? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to load the HTML uh, and that's gonna get loaded in a web view. So I'm gonna import two things here. First one is HTML kit and the next one is uh, web kit. We're gonna want to create a WK web view, which is a web kit based web view. Those of you that have been working on iOS for a while, you'll know that UI WebView was replaced by it. So this is going to be a WK WebView. And in here, we can create a WebView as a WK WebView. And we're going to create this with a frame of zero and a config. Now the config we need to use to uh, specify things like JavaScript enabled. Uh, and whatnot so we can actually run some tasks on it. So we can say the config, uh, actually we don't even need to do that for the purposes of this video now that I think about it. So let's uh, let's just create it like this and let's get rid of that config. Uh, in here we'll say return web view, not web kit, web view like so. And we want to go ahead and add this as a sub view, but the thing that I was actually getting at that we want to do is set the uh, navigation delegate to self. The reason we want to do this is we want to know once the web page has loaded, which will uh, indicate that we should begin parsing out the content. 
So we can add an extension on view controller and uh, conform to WK navigation delegate. And the function that we want is did finish. So web view did finish navigation. And in here we can begin parsing. So how do we actually load the URL? Well, that part's really simple. So we can basically uh, in here say web view dot load and this wants a URL request and you can create that with a URL and we're going to create the URL right above and let me actually change this property name to URL string so it doesn't conflict and here we can say a URL is a URL with a string if that's not a valid URL we can go ahead and return and that will basically kick it off and let me also go ahead and set a frame to this so you guys can see the web view. Once you've done that, hit command R to build and run and make sure you're loading up google.com in it. And there it goes. There's google.com and all those images. Now, what we wanna do is we wanna parse out all of those uh, images, which is an image tag for those of you hopefully familiar with uh, HTML. So we're gonna call it parse images, parse images, and an image tag, for those of you not familiar with uh, HTML, looks something like this. So it's image, source, but we actually don't even need to care about any of this. What we can go ahead and do is extract the HTML from the web view and use HTML kit to help us do the parsing. And actually, now that I think about it, we do need that configuration because to extract the HTML, we need to run JavaScript. So that's why I initially started adding this. This is going to be a WK Web View configuration. And we can create this as follows. And we want to say config, whoops. We basically just want to uh, enable uh, JavaScript, so we can say this is prefs, preferences, and this is going to be WK uh, preferences, believe we want this, and we can say prefs dot JavaScript enabled is true. So we want that so we can run JavaScript and you'll see the JavaScript that we need in two seconds. If you're not familiar with JavaScript, not to worry, we run it very minimally. So what we want to do now is we can say web view evaluate JavaScript and we can say off of the document we want the body's inner HTML and then this will return to us assuming it doesn't fail we can use a trailing closure closure syntax here a result and an error we can say guard led HTML equals the result and error equals nil and now we have uh, the HTML string. So let me go ahead and print out the HTML so you guys can actually see that we do in fact have it. So go ahead and hit command R to build and run. You'll see the web view loads, finishes loading, and it dumps out all of the HTML on this page. It's obviously a lot for this page. Now we don't wanna parse the string manually, so how do we, how do we actually do it with some grace, as I like to call it? So we're gonna create a HTML document and we're gonna use a HTML kit, which provides some of these objects for us. So we can create a document passing in the string and the rest of it is actually pretty easy and pretty, pretty magical. So if you wanna get all of the images out, we can say images is going to be an array of HTML elements. We can say document query all selector, uh, we want, let's see, document, document, images is going to be documents. Let's see, uh, we should cast the HTML as a string. That's complaining. We wanna say document dot query selector all, and we want all the image tags. And that'll give us a array of all of the images and let's say we just want to get the URLs out for all of them. We can actually say, give us all the images and compact map it. So element in, 
And in here we can say guard let source is element.attributes the source as a string. If we don't have a source, we can return it. Otherwise, we can go ahead and return that source. And after we're done with all this, we can print out our images. And I will also print out found count uh, of images. So go ahead and hit Command R to build and run. And what it should do is it should parse out all of the sources for the images and then print them out. So it's definitely not printing anything out. So something weird is going on. So let's see, let's, uh, let's add some logging in here. So uh, HTML is this as a string and error equals nil. Let's put a print in here. Fail to get HTML string. Let's try that one more time. So we load in the web view and it looks like we're printing out something because this randomly disappears. So let's, uh, let me get rid of this print and let's just have that one there. So we're definitely doing this thing, I believe. Let me add a print in here. Created HTML doc, hit command R. And let's take a look once more. Okay, cool. So created HTML doc and found 37 images. So the first time I was screwing up because I bet the array is super long. So it's pushing the, it's pushing it on over. So I'm going to, I'm going to add a for loop over this. We'll say for source in images and we can print out the source with a line break after it. Now let's see all those URLs printed out. So here we have, yeah, these are super long URLs, which is why I was kind of screwing things up for us. But uh, basically we have now, uh, so the URLs are actually not even URLs, it's actually the, the base 64 encoded image. So Google likes to use these instead of actual images. But the point of this video is you can use HTML kit to really gracefully and cleanly parse out content uh, of a HTML body. So the workflow is basically as follows. Uh, bring an HTML kit, create a web kit view, load up a URL into it, and make sure you have the navigation delegates so you can observe once the page has loaded. To parse it, use JavaScript very minimally to get the inner HTML out. After that, get the HTML as a string, create an HTML document from it, and then you have access to this query selector all, and you can pass in things like get all the divs or get all the a tags, or all the paragraph tags, so on and so forth. So it's a bit of a, I think it's a bit of an interesting uh, way to kind of scrape data. Now, educational purposes only, copyright stuff, it does apply. So be careful with that kind of stuff. But uh, I think HTML kit is a wonderful framework. Now I mentioned you can do it manually. The manual way to do it is uh, obviously if you get rid of all of this stuff, everything we're doing here is non HTML kit uh, related, so we can get rid of this actually. And to do it manually, what you would need to do is basically run a regular expression or a regex. And you could say, uh, you could parse out this string yourself. So let's say uh, you want to split all of the images tags. You could say HTML components separated by components separated by, and you can separate by all the image tags. The point of using, the point of using uh, HTML kit is doing string manipulation like that on the scale of huge HTML blocks is very error prone and pretty tedious. So HTML kit is definitely a nice lightweight addition to make your life easier. So that said, I think I'll wrap up the video there. If you haven't hit that like button already, make sure to do so for the YouTube algorithm. Hit subscribe while you're at it if you enjoyed the content. If you have any comments, errors, questions, throw them down below. I love hearing from you guys and I try to reply as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.